this puppy on. I really like this laser level. It's uh, self-leveling and it's, it's really nice. You can't see the beam uh, during the day, but the reader will still read it. I want to give a hats off and a gigantic thank you uh, on behalf of Robert and myself to the men who came over uh, here recently and helped us finish backfilling uh, this cellar. As you remember, this was a huge hole. And when uh, Dinah over there broke, uh, we, we didn't know what we were going to do. I mean, we figured we would just hire a backhoe operator. So that's what we did, and in four hours we were able to finish this job, including compaction. Uh, I think there were a total of six guys out here working, including myself. And we got it done very quickly, and I'm oh so grateful for that. Yesterday it felt like summer out here, sweating. Today it feels like fall, which worries me a little bit, because I know fall's approaching. So... Uh, goal is to get the grade beam poured uh, and parts of the slab that need to be poured by the end of October, which is typically the first hard freeze out here. So that's the plan. We got the stuff we need for rough end plumbing, you know, in ground plumbing, uh, and some pipe over here, uh, so that when we finish the trenching, we can begin doing more trenching <laughs> for this in ground pipe. I've got two inch and I've got three inch. Before we can pour the foundation, I have to have the uh, plumbing inspected, so. Uh, met with a plumber, bought a bunch of stuff, and going to try to do this rough-end plumbing. Well, in fact, I'm going to try to do all the plumbing myself. Never done new construction plumbing. Um, you know, and, and I would say that, uh, you know, how hard can it be? But it can be hard. So if things aren't just right, I, am, I would have to do things all over again. So... I'm going to be very careful as I go along and make sure I get it right. And the, the plumber who sold me the stuff assured me that I could send him pictures or call him or whatever. And that he would give me the proper advice. So we left him sitting out overnight because it's cool enough. But yeah, we got a couple of tote bags with some uh, potatoes in them. There's a golden variety there and it looks like a russet variety. Let me leave the dirt on them. And we'll stick them down in our brand new cellar over the winter and see how they do.
Anyway, good morning. Some fog in the low-lying area down there by the river. All the way across, as far as you can see. But up here, no fog. And we're only about, I don't know, 50 feet above it. My back still feels good. And, uh... <clears throat> So I got a I got a pretty good back workout yesterday, but today I but I I didn't I didn't uh, push it too much. So um, I've got a it still feels good. So I can finish this digging I think, and then we can start filling a lot of this trenching with gravel. Well, we've had a major breakthrough here. <laughs> all the major, major, not all of it, but all the major trenching for the house is done. Yes. Robert's working hard, folks. He's been working hard. I don't shovel the correct way, and I end up hurting parts of your body that shouldn't hurt when you shovel. Well, like my back doesn't really ever hurt. Even if you shovel the right way, if you haven't shoveled in a while, parts of your body are going to hurt. My elbow, it won't bend when I try to shovel now. I just have to be stiff-armed and lift, and then I can barely lift. We've been moving a lot of gravel, folks. Look, that pile is super small now. Yeah. As you know, we're in sand here. It's really soft soil. And so we have to sort of build the trenches and fill them at the same time uh, and compact them at the same time to prevent cave-in. So this is our trench and we're building the trench and just backfilling it here as you can see as we go and filling the trench as we go so we can fill them together. That's a lot of fun work, wouldn't you say, Robert? It is. It's a great way to spend a Saturday, huh? Yeah. The weather's beautiful. Today. I'd rather go to Oktoberfest, but... <laughs> We always miss all the fun things because we're always doing the projects when the fun events are happening. Well, you know, maybe when the place is built. I'll be dead. <laughs> I won't want to go to Oktoberfest because I'll be 95. <laughs> Something tells me even at 95 you'll still want to go. <laughs> okay, so just like one and a half more little trips to make there. I'm pushing that case on along so we can... Uh, get this backfilled and trench, uh, trench filled and with gravel and all that fun stuff. We have to take our time because we need to make sure, you know, again, loose sand and this whole area here has been backfilled, has been uh, backfilled and compacted as best as we could do it because remember, this is the hole from when we built the, the uh, cellar here and that hole goes out to oh, about where the wheelbarrow is. So, uh, no, even further. Um, and when we put this back, we, you know, we backfilled it carefully in lifts and compacted it, but uh, I still need to make sure I'm doing a really good job of compacting here because this trench, this cellar, uh, and this floor, I mean, they all have to, this ground, they all have to hold a lot of weight. So um, we need to make sure we're doing it right. Uh, I'm wiped. My back is killing me from shoveling all that gravel and moving this earth and packing this stuff. So my back needs a rest. We'll come out here tomorrow afternoon after church and hit it again. If these soils here were anything but type 1 soils, we would want to install a drain, what's called a drain tile or a, a drain pipe, perforated drain pipe in the bottom of this trench uh, and wrap it in some landscape fabric so that it could uh, pull the moisture out from underneath here and get it out of here. But don't need to do it with type 1 soils, particularly 
when we only get eight inches of rain here per year it's really dry and so the likelihood that moisture is going to build up in the bottom of this trench is pretty slim pretty slim and if it does it'll drain through the fabric right into the soil so we're good Under my feet, I feel the sky tumbling down. So this is what's called a rubble trench foundation. It's a uh, pretty old technology, been around probably since the beginning of the world. But uh, traditionally, you use larger stones. But <clears throat> for this, we're just using washed three quarter inch gravel angular gravel and angular is important because you want those stones to sort of lock together and hold in place if you had really smooth stones they'd slip around um but uh so yeah so you dig a trench as wide as you need for your footing down to or below the maximum frost line for your area fill it to the depth you need with these this angular gravel or other stones you can use larger stones and then um, be sure to use landscape fabric uh, in your trenches because you don't want the sand or surrounding earth infiltrating that rubble <coughs> if it does over time it'll just build up into a mass inside there and then water won't be able to drain away from it and you can get soil heave frost heave in, uh, in a cold climate but and sometimes it sounds like you're saying rebel like rebel yell oh. but it is rubble rubble as in barney rubble r-u-b-b-l-e that's right fred anyway um yeah and then uh what we'll do is we'll cover the top of the trench over with this extra landscape fabric that we've got laying here and then we will set our boards to pour a concrete grade beam on top of this. Now, you might be asking, geez, why is this trench so huge? Because for you know the size of house we got, one story, why do you need a trench that big? Um, the reason is because we're in type one soils, which are sand, which require a wider trench. Uh, and then also, because the grade beam that we're gonna pour on top of this is 18 inches wide and 16 inches thick uh, and reinforced with rebar and so you may be asking why are you pouring a grade beam so huge and that's because we have to set straw bales on top of this so you need a footing that's wide enough to to hold your sill plates for the straw bales that's why also the reason it's so big is because we're going to have several tons of earth on top of this house we're going with a natural roof or a living roof they call it which is earthen and so it needs to support the weight of this heavy roof as well that's the reason i gotta rest my back I tell you this is really hard on the back this gravel's heavy and we're shoveling it over there into the wheelbarrow and then rolling it over here and those wheelbarrows and when you fill them they're heavy and if you don't fill them you're sort of wasting your effort because you know one wheelbarrow fill only feels about that much of the trench so slowly but surely we'll get there but right now i've got to go rest my back for a little while come back out this afternoon yeah i'm really grateful that at my age i'm able to do this even though it's not easy for me i uh i feel pretty good i'm i just i don't know i'm surprising myself i guess Okay, so... Well, how do we know what we look like? We look terrible. <laughs> uh, okay, so all of the gravel is packed into the trenches. It's now time to start forming up the foundation. So we just got a bunch of wood, a bunch of stakes, a bunch of rebar, and 
And now we get busy. You looking forward to it, Rob? All right. Oh, we're making progress, but it's slow. It's too slow. We gotta make better progress than this because the weather's getting colder and we're gonna miss our October 31st deadline. Well, we've got the uh, foundation forming mostly done and we had our first snow this morning. But as you can tell, it burned right off, so. Now it's time to work on some in-ground plumbing before they come out and pour concrete. We've got our trenches dug for in-ground plumbing. And so we need to start on that today. But first, we got to get all this wood put back up on Dumpy over there and out of the way because I have to drill some holes in here for electrical sweeps and sleeves to pass plumbing through and stuff like that so um that's, that's sort of our day I'm running short on time and the weather's getting cold and I got to get concrete poured here pretty quickly and I I just ran out of time to do the to do the um the pressurized pipe the PEX. So uh had a plumber come out and do it. They had it done in 4 hours. Can you believe it? It would have taken me a week. Um anyway, so yeah, and they did a really nice job of putting things where it needs to go. So there's uh, one bathroom ready to go. I really like the way that they set up those manifolds with copper. Uh, using copper makes this a lot more compact because with this kind of PEX fitting, it requires a heck of a lot of room to work in. And if they had made that out of this material, uh, it would have been double the width. <laughs> would have taken up the whole wall. So uh, there's one more thing I need to do over there with the drain waste and vent lines the the plastic in the ground the the uh, the pvc before i can set it up for test but this one has been under test uh for 24 hours and it's holding pressure over 60 pounds beautifully so yeah nice just got to get some more done and then we'll be uh, i've already set up the inspection so they'll be out here in a few days to look at it. After that, I can fill in all these trenches and then get ready to pour concrete. The goal was to have this done by Halloween. And uh, it's the end of November right now, so it's just taking a long time. But it uh, looks like it's going to be done before the end of the year, which I'm happy about. Then the whole pad can just sit here over the winter while we take care of some other things and then we'll hit back at this in the spring so another uh i guess sort of momentous day uh i don't know if you can see them but there are four rebar posts one two three four going that way off to the east um and here comes a uh skid steer with an auger attachment, I need four holes drilled uh, for the ground mount solar system. Solar for the solar ground mount system, and uh, we're almost ready to pour concrete. As soon as those are in, and hopefully they won't cave in. Oh, I pray they won't cave in. Uh, then we can uh, pour the concrete and. 
set the posts for the uh, solar ground mount system and uh, get her done. Well, here we are on our final day, our final push to get everything done and ready with the foundation so that we can pour concrete. Plumbing inspection passed, which is awesome, but the plumber's gonna come back later today and just do a couple of finishing touches. Uh, we need to put some insulation on some of this PEX out there and stuff like that. Last night, Robert and I filled in the trenches, many of them, most of them and uh, so we've got I got some more of that to do today Robert's working a half day she'll be back later to help get this final push done so that we can pour concrete tamale <clears throat> well concrete's not getting poured today or maybe for a few days No fun and kind of stressful. No, I mean, I can hold it this way while we while you use it to hog down, you know, with acceleration. Yeah. Like that? Um, yeah, I can. Yeah. Well, we are another day uh, dealing with this snow so we can pour concrete. Yesterday, Robert removed about two inches of snow that was all over uh, in here over the cellar area. Still got a little bit to remove, but I'm hoping some of this burns off. Um, Robert will work on that today. Uh, I and the guys we hired are going to finish off the finish off the installing these pilings for the solar. We've got one more to do. With the freezing temperatures, it's really difficult to weld. But uh, we're what we're doing is this one sits on the ground inside the hole about seven and a half feet down the rest of these though because of the slope of the hill are suspended inside the holes they don't touch the ground down there so uh using these little you know homemade framed up systems here and then once we know we've got the piling to the correct height i'm welding a piece i'm welding a piece of rebar onto there that stretches across this frame to hold that height in place so that we can uh, you know get it right you know that snow came and really here before we can pour and uh and then we've got to get our J bolts set, our anchor bolts uh, for the concrete. Uh, finish straightening up a couple things, and uh, we should be should be good to go. It'll be another busy day. So here we are, pour ready to pour. We cleared off, we cleared the snow out of everything last night, getting ready for this, and then overnight we got an inch of snow. <laughs> So it's refilled, but they're using hot water in the mix and the concrete mix, so it'll melt off this little bit that's still here. Um, we're ready to go. Our truck that's uh, ready to convey the concrete and uh, concrete truck over there.
Oh, let, let me go plug in. It's all poured. We just need to float it, straighten it, trowel it. And so now I can shave all this off because I sort of promised myself privately that I wasn't going to shave this until this was done. So it's done. It's not pretty, but it's done. I'll show you why it's not pretty. This part actually is very pretty because um, that's, you know, finished floor. But uh, the footings, as you can see, are quite ugly. And <clears throat> it's because being winter time, the concrete people had to add an accelerant to a curing accelerant to the concrete up faster you wouldn't have problems uh it's really fast faster than we but they're okay they'll they'll still be fine so i mean they're floated and they're level but they're not pretty and uh that's just the way it is you know we did our best uh with the time we had but it was just setting up so quickly yeah ugly but uh you know we we got it taken care of we're we got it <laughs> anyway we have to cover these with some we have to cover all this concrete with some curing blankets uh, so that it, you know, so that it, it cures more slowly this time of year. That's important. We want to cure slowly. So here we are covering everything with a blanket. I got to wait till Robert gets here to lay blankets over this because if you're not careful, if you slide the blankets over it or something, you can scuff up that green concrete and I don't want to do that. So. I need Robert here so we can gently lay the blankets over top. And uh, so, anyway, there we are. The pilings were filled as well, almost. 